everyone and welcome back. This is Wendy Historian and today we are talking about One Direction's Red or Black performance. Red or Black was a short-lived British game show based entirely on chance wherein contestants had to guess either red or black and then be eliminated. I would love to explain more about how this game show worked, but I saw several episodes and I never had any idea what was happening. And in a September 2011 episode shot at Wembley Arena, One Direction featured as guest performers to sing What Makes You Beautiful in the final round. Not only was this One Direction's first live television performance since their days on The X Factor, but it was also their first time playing their very first single as a band live on television. And fans were beside ourselves with anticipation. We were tuning into the shoddiest live stream you could possibly imagine from all across the world. There was a lot riding on their red or black performance, with it sort of feeling like a make or break moment in their career. It was their first performance as a real band, and they had to prove to the general public that they were more than just pretty faces with the full strength of Simon Cowell's PR machine behind them. There's always been like a general social contempt for things that are geared towards young girls, with boy bands always being a huge target of social ire. So the general public was already primed to hate One Direction, and many had hated them ever since The X Factor. So their red or black performance had to be flawless in order to lend them legitimacy as musicians. This first live performance of What Makes You Beautiful was only half a live performance. The first half of the performance was a pre-shot video of the boys riding on the London Underground, being chased by fans while the studio version of the track was playing behind it. And when the boys and their entourage finally emerged onto the red or black stage, that was where the live singing began. This performance received possibly the most online hate of any One Direction performance ever. To start with, the song sounded off right away because the melody was being overpowered by the harmony. In general, during live performances of this song, Harry and Louie take the choral melody, while Liam and Niall sing harmonies, and Zayn does a sort of modified version of melody mixed with harmonic vocalizations. And whether it was nerves making the melody boys sing more quietly than the harmony boys, or whether it was a technical issue of the mic volume being set erroneously, many so-called fans online immediately began critiquing how wrong the song sounded live, and questioning whether the boys were actually good singers at all, or if they were just auto-tune babies. But the most hate-targeted moment of the entire performance was Harry's solo. Throughout the duration of the One Direction years, Harry Styles was fighting puberty with his bare hands. Being only 16 when the band started, Harry's voice still held the higher registers of youth, which were slowly lost over the course of 1D's run. Compare the band's first official performance of Torn. Nothing left, I used to cry. My conversation has run dry. With their last official performance of it. There's nothing where she used to lie. So Harry's live vocals were occasionally inconsistent because his voice was inconsistent. He was being made to sing through the development of his postpubescent voice without adequate rest, pushing through all the cracks and graveliness and laryngitis usually associated with puberty. And at times, it was more obvious than usual. Harry was also, and I cannot stress this enough, a child singing on national television. He was nervous. You can see his hand tremble and clearly hear him gasping for air between lines. He was the only person in the band who had an onstage solo that night, and he was clearly feeling the pressure. But the internet did not care in the slightest. The general public had a total field day. As many were already convinced that One Direction was overhyped, untalented, teeny bopper nonsense that they were sick of hearing about, and now they had been vindicated. Oh, I'm right all along. These talentless children would be nothing without Simon Cowell. Additionally, a large faction of the fandom was embarrassed by the whole thing and immediately took to social media to defend themselves by throwing the boys under the bus. Many claimed that they weren't fans anymore, while others claimed they'd never really been fans to begin with. While the rest of us spent like three days straight going to war with the haters. It was a mess. Such a mess, in fact, that a few months later, Harry Styles famously addressed the aftermath of the Red or Black performance in ITV's special One Direction A Year in the Making. It was one of those times where you kind of feeling a bit sorry for yourself. Harry took it really hard because he felt like he had let the band down. It's, it was quite frustrating because when I tried to comfort him after the performance, obviously nothing, nothing I can say can really make that much of a difference. I felt a bit powerless. And when he found the online hate about his performance... Just a massive list of these comments. He especially took it to heart. The stuff that people were saying about him was just disgusting and no one wants to go and read that stuff about themselves. So after watching him break down in tears about it on camera... 
It's little wonder that fans flipped out when The Wanted's dog tweeted a reference to the performance during their Twitter feud with 1D. The red or black performance and the ensuing online hate signaled a major turning point in Direction or Fandom, as it was the first significant incident of true galvanization in defense of the boys. Fans saw how critical hate could and did affect them, and the unspoken but arguably most important rule of the fandom was born. Our job was to use our love to protect them from hate and defend them in online and offline spaces no matter what. You're an adult! You're an adult. You're an adult. You're an adult. You're an adult.